So I guess we'll start out by talking a little bit about why we're doing this kind of work. Um, talk about what's been happening for these past uh, three years or so and give you a little bit of an update on uh, some of these key projects. And then um, maybe think a little bit about what's next and uh, what else we can do together. So um, let's just roll right into it. Why? Well, in a nutshell, um, I was looking for an image that could stand for the current economic system. And um, this seemed as good as any. Now, we've got a series of talks, and there are a lot of, uh, uh, of talks and books and presentations that pick apart all the things that are wrong with their current economic system. Um, we don't really need to do that right now. I think uh, mostly what we're about is trying to create positive solutions and positive alternatives to the way things are. But um, just to frame it a bit, um, the current economic system is global. It's dominated by large and powerful corporations who are supported by large and powerful uh, countries, um, also supranational organizations like the WTO. Um, economic and political power is becoming concentrated into the hands of fewer and fewer people. And um, this is giving rise to more um, inequity, uh, more um, unaccountable decisions, let's say. It's having, it's having impacts in a variety of ways. Uh, it's also based on the mass consumption of resources, which is and will continue to have massive consequences. Now, some of these consequences are unintentional. Some of them maybe aren't. But all of this leaves communities like Totnes dependent and vulnerable. And so what can we do about that? Well, to the extent that we can meet more of our own needs locally, uh, support diversity and doing so while regenerating social and ecological relationships, uh, we can reduce this vulnerability and uh, create more prosperity and new forms of wealth. So that's what we're interested in doing and um, we're not the only ones. Um, this, uh, this approach is often called relocalization. It's a growing worldwide movement including lots of different kinds of organizations, lots of different uh, local authorities even in different countries around the world. Um, there's lots of research that talks about the benefits of this kind of economic development in terms of more local prosperity, reduced social problems, more, uh, more well-being, uh, reduced carbon emissions, reduced ecological footprints, and so on. So what we're doing here fits um, pretty well into this, uh, this broader movement that's been going on for um, quite some years. I like to talk about um, the work that we're doing uh, as creating the conditions for new economic actors and new economic relationships to emerge and to flourish. That's the key to regeneration in many ways. We've, um, we've been pursuing several key projects over the years and many of these got started in around 2011. So what you're looking at right here is the local economic blueprint, for example, and I've got a copy right here. The idea for this started uh, in 2011, the planning began in 2011. The idea behind the local entrepreneur forum started in 2011. The idea for creating a social enterprise incubator started in 2011. Um, the idea behind uh, launching this part of the new economy campaign for Atmos started back then. Um, the idea for relaunching the Totnes Pound and so on and so on. I think. Um, a lot of things were, were just sort of bubbling back then. I think Tressock had just done a share issue, Transition Homes was just getting going, and um, uh, over these past three years, a lot of these projects have, be, have uh, come to fruition in many ways. So the local economic blueprint, for example, um, let me just describe that in a nutshell. It's really about two different things. One is engaging key influential people in the local community members of the district council, the town council, chamber of commerce, uh, representatives from Darnington and Schumacher, Kevick, Totnes Development Trust, and so on. We looked at what it is that we wanted to get from our local economy. What kind of local economy do we really want? And we developed a shared vision that would guide um, the next part of, of the work. And in short, what we came up with was this statement the purpose of our local economy is to maximize the happiness and well-being of our entire community, to create 
an abundance of opportunity to satisfy our needs, and use and distribute resources fairly in a way that respects natural limits. So that kind of set the stage for the next part of the project, which was uh, researching the local economy and specifically key sectors that we thought would be important for building resilience and long-term sustainability in our town. So we looked at food, we looked at housing, we looked at the capacity to generate renewable energy, and we looked at health and care a little bit. We found some really interesting things. So for example, in the food economy, we spend about 30 million pounds a year on food and drinks through the shops, not including restaurants and bars and, and so on. Uh, about two-thirds of that leaves the economy almost straight away through the two big supermarkets that we have. Actually, we really have one big supermarket, Morrison's. The co-op is, is pretty small in comparison. So two-thirds, that might cause you to think a little bit about um, resilience and vulnerability. Actually, that, that's pretty good compared to most places in Britain. Most places in Britain are much more vulnerable um, with maybe 90 or 95 percent of their spending going out through the super supermarkets. Local retailers support three times the jobs of the main supermarkets in terms of spending. Supermarkets have one employee for every 140,000 pounds of turnover, more or less, whereas local shops have about three times the number of employees per 140,000 pounds of turnover. If we were able to uh, shift some of that spending away from the supermarket, for example, toward local shops, that would potentially mean a lot more jobs. It would definitely um, mean a lot more uh, income. So, for example, if we shifted about 10% of that spending to the local shops, that's two million more pounds in the local economy. Um, because of the local multiplier effect, uh, that could mean anywhere from three or four million uh, pounds of benefit circulating through the local economy. So um, when you spend money locally and it circulates locally longer, um, it's a benefit. And that effect is called the local multiplier. So if I spend money with a local shop and they're spending money with um, local suppliers and they're paying uh, local people who are employed, they're paying local service providers, that money circulates locally longer. So, um, for example, um, I think in the food sector, very often you have a very high multiplier effect. Um, and it kind of depends on, on what, the, what sector it is, what the nature of the business is, but um, uh, a company or a shop that is um, working with lots and lots of local um, suppliers um, will create lots of income and lots of local good and the multiplier will be quite high. And so we want to encourage that because what that means is more wealth staying in the town, creating more prosperity, uh, more jobs and that sort of thing. When we spend money with an out of town uh, company like a supermarket or a coffee chain or what have you, um, that's still their income, it's just that that income is, is leaving the town right away. So that's the local multiplier in a nutshell. We looked at a variety of, of projects that we could take forward that might begin to affect some of those shifts. This is the group looking at a variety of projects and sort of prioritizing what would be important to take on next. One of those projects was a local incubator. We went through this process with the, the local economic blueprint. Um, we made the case for supporting more local activity and uh, we went to the district council and suggested that the vacant office space that is up on the LAM uh, be converted to an incubator that we could run and we call that the, uh, the Reconomy Center. Here is just a little image of um, the grand opening. That is John Tucker, the leader of the South Ham's District Council. This is what it looks like inside, so why an incubator? Well, according to the UK Business Incubator uh, Association, 87% of businesses that graduate from an incubator survive after five years compared with firms that are not incubated and those survive at a rate of about 20 to 40 percent after about five years. So there's a lot of benefit to incubating social enterprises and uh, startups. So who is using the center? Well we have um, about 40 different users. It's a small place. We call it a, a drop-in incubator because 
Uh, we don't have room for permanent uh, office space for, for lots of different um, folks. We have uh, about 40 different users. They're individuals looking to create a new livelihood, startups. You might recognize some of these names. Uh, Tressock, for example, use of the space, Transition Homes, New Lion Brewery, and so on. One of the things that we do at the Reconomy Center is skill shares. We've had a number of skill shares designed to support local businesses with uh, accounting services, tax advice, different things like that. We're running uh, a number of workshops now on marketing and um, we'll be providing more support. We've got some funding to provide more support and we'll be uh, rolling that out soon. Now I'd like to just hand it over to Chantel who will talk a little bit about the Totnes Pound. These are the Totnes Pounds that we've um, released in May. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to say a little introduction um, about complementary currencies, local currencies. There is a difference. Complementary currencies encompass um, all, types of currency, all types of currencies that run alongside um, the nat a national currency. We are actually a local currency, which is um, um, a particular type of complementary currency. And we're an alternative means of exchange and a, it's a tool really to help money stick to a particular locality and to keep money that comes in circulating around our economy for longer. So, um, what's happened this year for us? Um, one highlight um, was the release of our new notes. It was the fourth edition of uh, Totnes Pounds and they were released back in May. It's a great fanfare. Um, the real ones are actually a little bit smaller. Um, and we also signed up 150 businesses in the, in the Totnes area, which now accept Totnes pounds. Um, and that, that number is growing all the time as we discover more businesses and more kinds of businesses um, that are accepting it. And we've also met the public um, quite a bit. We've been out and about at the market outside of Harlequin Books. At, um, at, at different events, um, telling people um, how much, um, if they switched their spending just a little um, to the local shops, um, how much it could generate for the, for the local economy. And it's quite a powerful message. Um, so our milestones for this year, um, just to backtrack and say that we're actually a not-for-profit community project. Um, Totnes was the pioneer local currency in the UK, um, so you know we, we were actually the first town to have its have its own currency in recent history. Um, so back in May we launched the paper pounds, as I said. Um, in June um, we we learned that we were to be um, the pilot town for the Guild of Independent Currencies, and what that is, um, um, in, in collaboration with Bristol Pound, we put in a grant application to Innovate UK. Um, in order to use Totnes as a pilot town um, for a network of local currencies because there's a lot of interest in local currencies around the UK um, and so it was felt that maybe we could do something quite powerful if, if they were all, all networked together. Um, so that's ongoing at the moment and this is helping to fund um, our launch of the electronic Totnes pound which we're very excited about in October. And that will incorporate um, a pay-by-text pay message system. So you can walk into a shop and pay, with, pay for your goods with your mobile phone. It doesn't have to be a smartphone. It can be an ancient brick and it will still work. And also we've got an online portal coming, um, for local, which is uh, beneficial for local SMEs and individuals. Because believe it or not, quite a number of businesses um, in this area don't have a very strong internet presence or any internet presence at all. So that this, is, this is a gap that we feel that we can, we can help fill. Okay, um, so we did some research to um, work out the best strategy um, for, for Totnes Pound. And we, it, it turns out that actually Totnes has the highest business density in all of Devon. Um, and, and it's above average um, for the number of people that are self-employed. The workforce is more educated than average and the population is skewed um, to the over 40s, as, as, is the same, as, as is the case nationally to an extent. And there's a projected population growth 
um, for retired people um, above other age groups um, moving forward. Um, so what we're trying to do is um, we're, we're trying to work with the local population and, and tailor, tailor what we offer to, to what people say that they need. Um, so, so we're hoping that we're going to add value by increasing the local circulation of money and, and strengthen the local economic network that we've got because we've got, quite a, we've got quite a good network here already and certainly our high street is more vibrant than a lot of them around the country. Um, but, but actually the economy is a very complex web and uh, sitting behind every high street shop that a lot of us use, there's lots of suppliers that, that feed into that chain and lots of business to business um, interactions and um, exchanges that happen. Um, so we're trying to strengthen that. Um, as I might have mentioned earlier, um, we want to help small medium enterprises increase their profile, um, particularly online and get more work via our network. You know, that's, that's specifically what we aim to do. Um, and finally, that people have told us that we really love the Totnes Pound, and we've noticed that since the tourists have gone home, we've noticed a dip in the number of um, the paper pounds circulating. And um, I, had, I had a chat with somebody that had a bed and breakfast the other day, and she said, oh yes, my, my, my visitors always want to buy Totnes Pounds from me. They're always asking me if I can have them. So I've actually started a little exchange and uh, you know so so people come here and uh, hopefully they take their totness pounds away as souvenirs and perhaps if they didn't want didn't get chance to spend that 21 or that 10 pound note um, they'll come back again next year um, to respend them next year but it, it you know it's, it, I think it's clear that it promotes a strong local sense of identity so just a shameless plug to finish off with um, we're actually launching our um, pay by text and electronic system this month, towards the end of this month. So if you'd like to sign up, um, it's totnesspound.org forward slash mobile. One thing I'm really proud to be um, associated with is this local entrepreneur forum that Jay's asked me to talk about. I understand the, the, the design for it was when um, Jay really wanted to do this incubator idea, but um, couldn't get hold of premises to do it. Yeah, so the idea was, why don't we just do a, like an incubator in a day? Yeah, so um, the idea was, is, is we just get lots of people together and um, stir up some magic, if you like, and uh, it's a process by which people can share their sort of business ideas uh, to groups of people and people can sort of identify with the needs and offer support in whatever way that might be. Uh, and so that, that was the idea. Um, and the format's changed slightly uh, over the three years we've been running it, um, but uh, it roughly follows, um, sort of the beginning is uh, some sort of a more formal presentations, if you like. Uh, so the last couple of years we've been presenting the findings from the economic blueprint to really make the economic case for, for localization work. Um, and then we go into a, a space which is, um, we call it Be Like a Bee, and it's a mixture of accelerated getting to know you activities followed by an open space session. Um, and open space is a, it's just a way of holding a meeting by which anyone with an idea can share their idea and people who are interested in talking about it can come and join them. It was highly effective at the beginning, early years of Transition Town Totnes in, in creating working groups around certain themes, many of which are still going on, um, around food and education and, and such like. Um, and then in the afternoon, uh, we have a few presentations from some um, sort of accomplished entrepreneurs from the community. Uh, and then we go into a, a session called the Dragon's Den, uh, or the Green Dragon's Den, as we've been calling it. You're all familiar with the programme, the Dragon's Den? Yeah? All right, so um, you know the kind of format where you go, some budding entrepreneurs pitch their idea to the entrepreneurs who are there with their own money and their own um, uh, questions. And they either rip the poor person to shreds or they uh, negotiate a little bit and invest and that sort of thing. So the idea was to follow that sort of model, have a little play with that, but instead of working with more friendly dragons. Um, and the first year we had, um, we had a private philanthropist, we had um, uh, the chair of Shop and Trust, um, and we had someone from a crowdfunding um, a bank, one of the early crowdfunding platforms. Um, and then we've opened it up since then, so actually it goes to the community, so the crowd uh, are the dragons, if you like, so people pitch their idea. All right, um, that's the Be Like a Bee session, enough of that. Um, and this is what the open space looks like. It looks like chaos, 
Um, it is a bit, um, uh, but it's a really interesting idea. We've got how many tables there? I think we had 12 or 13 tables, different discussions. And, and the rules are really quite loose that you can actually hop from one discussion to another. So it's a way of sort of accelerated networking and, and so Jay building um, is about enabling these relationships to happen. And here in this format, they can happen quite quickly. Um, and so really we don't um, uh, it, it plant any questions. There might be one or two. We know we always make sure there's a few people we invite, like people with experience in business planning or setting up cooperatives or, or accessing funding and that sort of thing. But apart from that, we're really it's from trusting whoever's in the room to come up with ideas. And invariably it's, it's pretty lively. Um, uh, so yes, all welcome from all ends of the age spectrum there. Um, and then at the end we have um, uh, these, these guys pitch, not this, this is Eric, but his business partner Adam, you might know Adam Sainer, he's the, the guy that started a growth cycle which is a trading name for Fungi Futures which they're probably better known for um, and they grow mushrooms out of waste. They started off working with wood chip and, and now they, they've specialised in growing oyster mushrooms out of spent coffee waste. Um, and it's, it's a really interesting project. They, they're based in Dartington at the school farm um, and it's a really great project in so many ways but it sort of brings together building a livelihood out of a, a sustainable initiative. It links food together with waste which is just one of the most obvious ways to um, address a lot of our ecological challenges is actually how do we cope with our waste. We don't actually see it as waste, we see it as a resource. So it's a nutrient for growing high quality food. Um, and so this is them coming back to give us an update on where they are now. Um, so we sort of keep adding to the story year on year. And um, I think if you read the Tottenham Times, is it this week or last week, you'll get a latest update. They've actually started a farm in Exeter. Uh, where they had taken over used um, office space, which is pretty cool. It's not as cool as the original place that they were going to do it, which was in an old disused bank vault, which would have really... You could see the headlines of building the new economy from the ground up or something. But they've disused office space um, where they have um, uh, bags of spent coffee waste. And it's the obvious place to do it in, in a city because that's where most of the coffee sources... Apart from Totnes, the rural areas of the country are not a great source of coffee waste. But in cities, there's loads of it. Um, and as an example of it, with the coffee, if you think what you get out of a coffee, it's less than 1% of the bean that we actually use in terms of the energy or nutrient value uh, that comes out. So all this stuff that's grown across the world and, and shipped across the world, we only use less than 1% of the rest we stick in the bin. So here they're turning it into something pretty special. Um, and they're not just stopped there, but they've actually um, got a social programme as well in terms of um, training people up uh, to do it. People who are otherwise finding it difficult to access employment or training. So that's one example of some of the, some of the projects we're, we're, um, we've been supporting through this. It goes to the floor afterwards, so the friendly dragons. Okay, yeah, here's another pitch. So this is a challenge I, I, I set myself for this year and for all years on. We normally have four projects pitching. This year we added a fifth because we were really, um, uh, we said we want a project coming from local young people. So that was, that was really important. These guys are from uh, a project called The Living Projects, um, and that's Charlie and... Elliot on the far side, Charlie towards us, Canada in the middle, the lady who's been mentoring them. And um, they, they are um, trying to explore ideas with helping young people um, address the issues around um, employment and particularly housing that exists in the town. And so they're sort of uh, seeing what's on the horizon or not for them. They really want to stay here, but all the opportunities for them uh, seem to point to go to a big city and they want to stay here. So, um, so they came and, and pitched their idea. I mean, where we'd really love to go with this and probably put it on the agenda now, as it's definitely something we'd like to do, is, is sort of raise, uh, raise the bar, raise the, the, the standard, if you like, of projects that are pitching. So if you know of any sort of budding entrepreneurs that are in the community at the moment and you think their sort of business idea um, fits the sort of brief of what the Reconomy works about, then, then, then put us in touch and we can, we can get to work. Five entrepreneurial <coughs> projects, um, an energy tech company, a uh, local agriculture project, uh, a couple of woodland projects, uh, youth-led housing and livelihoods. So yes, okay, £50,000. Is that just from this year or is that the three? This year. This year, okay. Um, legal and marketing services. So we had one of the town's um, legal services companies there. And, um, you know, it shows not everyone has to pitch up and state their offer. They, they said afterwards that they'll offer a year's free legal services to one of the projects. Um, and, and various things, yeah, random, from, from the obvious to the um, much needed, 
you haven't put massages there, but Jay always goes on about how many massages get offered out. But things like help, you know, you need to put a business plan together. I can see that, but you're never going to do it in your house with all the kids running around you and everything. I can offer you a couple of hours of childcare a week until your business plan is together. That's some of the sort of practical help that, that was offered as well. And maximising the synergies that happen between companies. This I picked up last night, if anyone was there last night, uh, the, the, the kicking off the Atmos project. They've probably heard of a new line brewery. They pitched at the very first event, the same time as the um, uh, Funky Futures Oyster Mushroom Company pitched. And part of their pledge was, um, what is it, that they'd offer their brewery waste for Funky Futures to grow their mushrooms off. And they did that. And then they used the mushrooms to go back and add a flavouring to a stout at the New Lima Brewery. And we had that as our celebratory beer at the end. And this is the Atmos Ale, a well-hopped pale ale that was brewed to celebrate the, the launch of the Atmos process that was going on last night. We are looking at new models of investment. So internal versus inward, for example. I think a lot of planners, a lot of people in local government, they think, OK, great, we need to regenerate our local economy. Let's bring in a big company from outside inward investment. Um, that's great, except it, it leaves intact those extractive kinds of relationships. Those profits then leave the area. So what we're talking about is internal investment. So um, unlocking the social capital and, and um, uh, goodwill of the people who are in the community to reach into their own pockets, reach into their own bank accounts, move their money, and invest in their community. Um, patient capital, so the idea that uh, you can invest in um, a local company and be patient about when you achieve a return. So um, venture capitalists, they're typically looking for a 10x kind of return in a few years. Um, patient capital might not be, uh, you might not be expecting uh, a return on your investment for maybe 10 years, or maybe it's tied to revenue and you can afford to wait. Um, IPS and share issues, we're going we're gonna to be hearing much more about that because um, Atmos is going to be doing a share issue at some point. Um, Transition Homes might do the same thing. Um, uh, Tresoc has done several. It's, it's kind of growing in popularity all around the country. It's a, it's a really great way to involve the community in um, various kinds of community businesses. Um, crowdfunding is another way to um, source investment for um, local social enterprises of various kinds. So, you know, in short, um, what this event does is just kind of uh, expands the notion of what investment is. Um, everything from, from pounds on the one hand to hugs on the other, it gives everyone a chance to be involved. And that inclusive element, I think, is really important because it, um, uh, it provides the connectivity between uh, the people who are uh, putting forward business ideas and the people who might be uh, become customers or benefit in some way from those um, from those business businesses. Uh, so I think it also helps to give confidence to people who maybe before didn't have the confidence to start their own uh, their own enterprise. So if you want to learn more about the LEF, tinyurl.com, LEF 2014, pretty easy to remember. Um, we can come back to that. So after three years, uh, the results so far, um, well, we have a few more locally owned firms on the scene, a few more local livelihoods. And this is all really just kind of um, the result of this, um, this energy that's been uh, forming over the last three years. Uh, there's infrastructure to support them. So we have the Reconomy Center, for example. Um, and the left, I think, provides uh, a nice channel for people to find uh, support of all kinds. Um, and this is spawning all kinds of new networks, and I think this is really important. Um, uh, these kinds of relationships between enterprises and between enterprises and investors, this is part of the juice that makes Silicon Valley what it is. Uh, and we can, we can reproduce some of those elements here, um, and they're beginning to happen. So um, through the left, um, what we're finding is that businesses are beginning to collaborate with one another. Um, we're already seeing that with Atmos and, and Tresoc and some of the other folks who've been on the scene for a bit. Um, and um, maybe more importantly, I think we're beginning to see uh, in, 
uh, informal networks of investors beginning to take shape here. Um, and that's really important. Um, if you recall, after the banking crash of 2008, uh, there was a big campaign put forward by Positive Money to move your money. Well, where are you going to move it to? Um, there weren't a lot of options, but what we're doing by providing, um, uh, by kind of creating the conditions for new enterprises to arise, whether they're community uh, owned or sole traders, is providing opportunities for people to actually invest in local companies and get a return, a financial return, but also uh, a broader return, the broader return that you get when you have a vibrant local economy. And so um, one of the other things that's happening is that an entrepreneurial culture is beginning to emerge here. And um, this is where Hal likes to make fun of me for saying, I'm from Silicon Valley. Yeah, at the moment, this is really kind of a strange thing to say, but all eyes are on us. I mean, believe it or not, um, there's a lot of stuff happening in this area that's now being replicated elsewhere. I mean, first of all, um, I think uh, there's a really interesting dynamic between what's happening with Transition and what's happening with Schumacher. It's attracting a lot of interesting people who are, are coming here. Um, it used to be people were coming here to learn about um, Transition. Now people are, are coming here to learn about um, the new economy. And um, that's very exciting because not only are they bringing ideas, but they're taking ideas back with them. And, and I think that's providing a lot of validation for what's happening here. Um, the local economic blueprint. Um, you know, that, that project here did a really great job of connecting with people who were uh, in local government. It provided an, an evidence base and it made the case for economic relocalization as an economic regeneration strategy. And so what's happening? Other communities are doing it too. Um, it's been done in Brixton, it's been done in Herefordshire, it's being done in Tavistock, which is another Devon uh, community. It's being done in Buxton. It's being done in Portugal. It's being done in Penzance. And um, there are lots of other folks who are interested in doing it too. Um, the local, uh, well, the Totnes Pound. I mean, the Totnes Pound is, is kind of what made um, Totnes famous in, in terms of all of this kind of thing um, when it was launched back in 2007 originally. Um, I think a boy band on TV, um, Boy Zone, uh, said, oh wow, there's this place that has their own money, isn't that cool? And um, suddenly, uh, you know, there were uh, half a dozen other communities in the country now developing their own complementary currency. Now there's Brixton, or sorry, there's, there's Bristol. The mayor's taking a salary in it. Uh, you can pay your, your uh, tax in the Bristol Pound. Um, they've estimated after one year, it's already done a million pounds worth of economic good in the community. And, uh, and now we're, uh, apparently we're, we're gonna be having an electronic version of the pound here and soon connecting to a wider network of uh, local currencies. Um, that's kind of exciting. Um, the local entrepreneur forum, um, how actually it's, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, compared to a lot of these things. It's relatively inexpensive to do. And um, what we're finding, as you saw from that in the slide about the results from last year, um, it's, a, it's a really nice um, community-oriented, inclusive uh, way of regenerating uh, economic activity, um, supporting local entrepreneurs, getting people involved in all kinds of interesting ways. And so people want to do that uh, elsewhere. It's going to happen in Brixton in May. Um, it's going to happen uh, elsewhere throughout Devon. Uh, Exeter is interested in doing it. Uh, North Devon in Biddeford, they're going to be doing this. They're interested in doing it in Plymouth, in Penzance, in Bridport, in Stroud, and Oxford. And um, this is without a whole lot of um, promotion. Um, I think people are just waking up to the fact that um, economic regeneration uh, can be community-led and it can be bottom-up. Um, we don't need to wait around for help from local authorities, although, Robert, it would be very welcome. And there are all kinds of ways that, that, um, that you can help with that. There's something big on the horizon, too, that we should be taking into account, and that is um, Atmos. Has anyone heard of Atmos? 
Yeah, of course you all have because it's been big news for the last couple of weeks. They held a big consultation um, last night or, or the beginning of what will be a whole series of consultations. That's going to be huge for this area and um, it provides something that we can, we can shoot for, something that we can get ready for. It's going to be a couple of years before the new vision takes shape and is built, but, but when it is, um, it's going to be, well, it's, it's potentially going to be the heart of a new um, economy in Totnes. And so, um, it's very exciting. So, what's next? What else can we do? I mean, we've, it seems like we've accomplished uh, a lot in the last three years. To be honest with you, it's kind, of, it's kind of early days. I mean, when you look at the potential of what this place could be like, um, we haven't really accomplished very much at all yet. I think we've created some foundations. We've set the stage for some really interesting things. Um, what's next? So um, there are some, uh, some big thinkers out there in the world of uh, local economics and, and local development, um, people like Michael Schumann and, and so on. And uh, they've put together various um, lists of things that you can do to shift your local financial system or um, support uh, more local activity, more local business formation and so on. I pulled a couple of these ideas out. Um, uh, one thing that we can do is we can look at our strengths. What, are, what's, what kind of social capital do we have around this area that has yet to be tapped? Um, there's this whole idea of the anchor institution. So um, there's this, uh, there's a, a great story about the Evergreen Cooperative in Cleveland uh, working with a, a hospital that was the anchor institution that has created um, hundreds of jobs, um, lots of revenue and new uh, new businesses. Um, we could be producing even more of our own energy. The fact that that we, um, uh, well, we've got Tresoc, but we still have huge potential in terms of solar, wind, um, biomass, waste. Um, we could produce um, uh, 10, 20% of our energy needs if we really went at it gung-ho. Uh, and if we did, that would mean more money circulating in our local economy longer rather than going out to the big six. Um, should we be looking at doing an, a move your money campaign, perhaps? Or maybe developing um, a local investor network or a local investor club? Um, there are other places around the world where this has really been successful in forging those relationships between people who have money and people who have business ideas. Maybe we should start a local bank. Anyway, um, I'm interested, we're interested in hearing what your ideas might be and how you might like to get involved. And so, um, why don't we uh, leave it there and take some questions and, and start some conversation.